Hmm. Let me have everyone start the session by rolling a perception check. It's better than my one, but... This is why we don't let you do watch anymore. Some of us are pretty perceptive. Yeah, I'm seeing the flaw in my doing watch now. Casey. The sound of cracking ice, shattering glass awakes you from your sleep. Araya, Ishlan, they're on watch not there. You see the dancing in the firelight. You hear crunch of a leaf. Or, yeah, crunch of a leaf beneath the snow, the stomp of a twig, a footstep in the forest. All your friends are asleep around you. Does it sound like a Rhea or Sean's footstep? With 27 perception. Hmm. I think maybe one sound isn't enough to know. You haven't moved yet. I'll, I'll, I'll peek an eye open, see if I can see anything around. You peek an eye open just enough to see the shape moving at the edge of the campfire's light. You see the swoosh of a long reptilian tail. Another small crunch of snow. You see a broad-shouldered reptilian figure with his feathers sneaking closer to camp. Wait, didn't this happen already? In one swift motion, Casey snaps a finger as he nips up onto his feet. A ball of fire erupts into his palm. He so, says, Good. At least do this the pleasure of introducing yourself before entering our camp. And he says this loud enough to presumably awake his friend. Yeah, sounds good. I think uh, Kibeth and Peach rolled high enough to where they were awoken by some noises as well, just in time to see light flare out from the fire in Casey's palm. The flames slick to the edges of the camp and illuminate half a dozen reptilian fig figures with bright feathers encroaching on your camp. Do we recognize any of them? Wait, do you remember just a moment ago? Wasn't Muna there? Wait. You look around. There she is. You see her. Just She's not on the front. She's one of the ones in the back creeping closer. I I wave to her. <laughs> um, well, you're lying on the ground right now. So, like, you just are literally have just woken up in the instance of this. Okay. As soon as I see her, I, I don't even sit up. I just... Raise a hand if <laughs> um, what does what do the others do? I guess Peach uh wakes up to the sound of Casey's voice and that kind of like bright sudden light of the fire. Uh she looks around, like kind of stirs, sits up a little bit, looks around to anybody who's nearby her, and if anybody's within arm's reach, it's gonna sort of quietly shake them, be like, like get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. I'll say that's so, Yeah. Mm hmm. What? Um. Salinger, wake up. We've got company. Also, yeah, yes. welcome back. I, I didn't realize you had fallen asleep here. So I said, all this is happening simultaneously in the, the time of one second. 
Yeah, you should wake up, wake up, wake up. Are they still coming forward? Like, infiltrating the game? I'm sorry, no, it's only been one second. But as uh, again, as you guys begin to, as a flame bursts out from your hand, Kabath waves, Peach wakes, Salon drop, and he begins to rouse. Um, also, roll a perception check for Poppy. That's an 11 with her bonus. There is the thump of a bowstring and an arrow flies to the air towards Kabeth. Kabeth, what's your armor class? 19. 19. Um, are you currently wearing armor? All right. There's a ping. Plank uh, his arrow hits your pauldron. just bouncing off. You see another one. Just, there's a... a, a I guess, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if describing blimps, but there's a curl and you see a bearing of fangs, swishes of tail. Three of them are moving in closer to camp. Yeah, that's to this. Um, Casey spies Muna and looks at all the others. And uh, his feet slowly lift off of the ground as he raises into the air about five feet. And he spreads his palms and lets out a deep guttural word in Ignin that rumbles across the land as flames roar over the heads of all those that are coming towards as he casts burning hands. He's looking to shoot it over their heads rather than onto them. Flames burst outward. Several of them go um, uh, ducking back from the flames, um, creating more distance between you and the ones coming into camp. Salinger, what are you doing? In only a matter of seconds, Salinger has time to stretch, get up to one knee, and then realize what's in front of him. And goes, wait, stop, um, and says it in the same kind of tone and command that he usually says to Poppy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Roll a charisma check. I got charisma. A tiny bit. It's a brief hesitation um, from some of them. Then one of them steps forward, draws back a bow, <laughs> fires an arrow at you. Now, what's your armor class right now? Without a shield, it's 16. Okay. And yeah, just a reminder for camp and like resting and stuff like that, you have to have the type of armor you can rest in. Um, unless you don't wear Oh, you don't even wear any, do you? No, he, that would cramp his style. Um, sorry, did you say 16 or 19? 16, yeah. With The shield usually puts me at 18. Okay, yeah. You see an arrow boom, hits you, and the shoulder goes in. Um, you catch very quickly a glance that the feathers are colorful, uh, similar to those like Poppy when you'd first found her. Oh, she's changed colors now. Uh, Araya and Ishtalan. Um, you see a flash of light back in camp and the distant shouting of voices. Having dropped out of invisibility, she's gonna pop on her light armor and and go running to camp. Oh no! Oh no! This was a distraction. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You're right. Ah. Oh, what? What? What do you, what you see from here? Um, just for the moment, you just see that the flash, um, and then you're running that way. Get um, back. Um, arrows hit you in the shoulder. None of the other ones hit Salinger. What do you do? I sit up and I say, hey, that's rude. 
friends. Luna. And I, like, uh, I kind of have my hands up, but, like, I have weapons, like, nearby at all times, so, um, maybe I, I have one hand up, but I'm kind of, like, eyeing the weapons at my feet. Mm, okay, sounds good. Uh, Peach, what are you doing? Uh, Peach is, has taken that, like, a half step sort of behind Salander as arrows are flying, and she says, can't you, can't you talk to them? Make, get them settled down? Where's Poppy at? I'll just take that as my cue. Um, Poppy skirts around, like instinctively behind some brush, as soon as arrows start flying. And as soon as an arrow hits Sal on the shoulder, he just growls, and you see him dissipate into water vapor and appear 30 feet in the direction of the shot. And if he's in range of one of them, he'd attempt to grapple immediately. All right, yeah, so you appear closer. You see the one that you appeared closest to um, drawing a long, looks like, blade made of, it's a claw bone? You're not sure. And they're getting ready to move forward to engage with you. Um, But just as Kabeth calls out, um, you see the quick shape of Muna kind of comes between the two of you, and you see she calls out. um, And you you can tell it's her voice, but she's speaking a language you haven't exactly heard before um and she's got her hands up between the two of you and um it seems like the posture of whenever these people are attacking seems to pause and hesitate they glance at each other they sell their weapons out um Araya and ishtalan you're approaching from the rear how much do we recognize moon or is it basically just a bunch of shadowy figures um you see um i mean you see like the, the the bright colors that you would associate with uh, the um, Oranakis. Which so has no idea who that is, or any of them has, you wouldn't know anything about them, right? Ishtalan? Yeah, I'm actually, in her particular reality, uh, did they end up encountering Muna? I feel uh, like I've been playing it so far that she basically has all the similar memories close enough. Oh. I haven't played any sessions really with you as this new character, so but, I'm like... I mean, <laughs> no, no, this specific instance, though, I hadn't thought about. Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, we hadn't defined that, but you would at least know what the Oranakis look like. <laughs> All right. Um, if she has not heard what anyone is saying, uh, then I think that she is going to slow down and uh, pulls the bow from over her shoulder and is going to draw and knock uh, the first, the closest target. The most threatening, actually. I think the most threatening target she can find. Okay, sounds good. Rhea, what are you doing? Is anyone hurt? <laughs> she, like, runs into, like, like, skidding to a stop. No weapons in hand, but uh, prepping any sort of, like uh, like, healing. But is taking stock of the situation, but heal first, kill second. Right, yeah. Two of them spin around, they point their bows at Araya and Ishtalan, but they haven't fired yet. You can hear urgent arguing going back and forth between one of these Arnakis and Muna. I think Ishtalan would definitely have taken care to stay out of the light. Um. And she's probably audible, but she would be invisible to anybody who doesn't have, like, true sight or blind sight. Mm, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were still invisible. Um, yeah, I think Araya had called out, so they spun around, they're pointing their bows at Araya. Sounds great. Oh! Muna, you have about two seconds to call off your friends. Things are going to get ugly. As Casey lowers back down, he snaps twice again, and two more balls of fire appear in his hand. There's more arguing going back and forth between Muna and what seems to be one of the larger Waranakis creatures. Um, their weapons are still trained on you, but they haven't attacked again yet since the first two arrows that flood flew. Did Muna get physically between me and the figure that shot me? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Are you bleeding? I mean, there's an arrow in my shoulder. There's probably blood. Yeah. It's a flesh. And we definitely can't understand the language she's speaking. No. Another second passes. You can see one of the ones on the far side away from where Moon and the leader are arguing creeps a little closer. Um, you can see at this point that um, uh, Dixman Samsel has gotten up to her feet. She's got a stick in her hand. Is the central campfire still lit? Yes. Yeah, Casey closes his palm, extinguishes one of the balls of fire, and waves his hand, and the campfire in the center increases in... I think I can increase the size. With control flame. Yeah, it increases in size. And gets much bigger and brighter right in the center of camp there. Flames roar up, and the one that was creeping closer to Sompsel stops and takes a few steps back. As a uh, Solinger kind of blips into a uh, water mist, uh, Peach uh, settles into taking a knee, and uh, she'll have the uh, clockwork rifle uh, braced on a knee, and uh, she'll take aim, uh, but from that crouched position, just to be prepared. Sounds good. You can see as a peach raises her rifle, the posture of some of the ones nearby change. Um, you can see the, the uh, widening stance, and one of them shifts her bow over to point at peach. You can see the the argument between Muna and the larger Ornacus is growing more intense. If somewhere close to a round has passed, Poppy would have gotten into a flanking position and probably started to try and pounce. So there's a rustle in the bushes. She's jumping to attack the one that was pointing at me. And I'm going to try and replicate the same body language that Muna was showing them towards Poppy in an attempt to communicate in that instant, if possible. Mm, okay. So you're inter you're interrupting Poppy's attack. Yes. In the same way, Pop, um, Muna interrupted their attack on me. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Ishtalan, Araya, Kabeth, any change? No, I'm still holding my hands up and kind of looking around. My pile of weapons are at my feet, but I haven't gone to touch any of them. Since everybody else does not yet appear to sort of the rest of the party. I don't know about the Arnakas uh, folks have do not yet appear to be attacking uh, Ishtalanda's holding onto it, but she has her... Does she have a... By looking around, can she get a bead on who is, I guess, on the most hair trigger? Um, all of them are on a hair trigger, but the one Moon is arguing with looks the most aggressive. Okay. Um, then she... Her aim settles on uh, the... The big guy, the big one, who's arguing with Muna. Um, and essentially, she would just be ready at the moment. It seems like he's going to take an aggressive action. Anything else from Araya? Checking out some spells. I'm like, do I use my tiefling scary voice? But I'm not a scary tiefling. I think you're terrifying. <laughs> Thanks. Um, does does Muna speak Draconic? Hmm. I don't know if you. But I I probably wouldn't know that. Huh? Yeah, I'm not sure if you would know, but I would say there is probably the slightest Draconic, like adjacency to the language they're speaking and it's not that okay. you can understand much of it but yeah case casey will 
hearing that, that it sounds bits and pieces that are sounding similar to, to Draconic. Um, Casey will speak in Draconic to the two, Muna and the arguing one. Um, specifically to Muna. Muna, what's the word? Are they going to be cool? And he says this in, in Draconic, which um, I don't know that many have heard Casey speak Draconic before, but it's very distinct from his normal primordial that sounds kind of like a volcano erupting. Um, it's a bit, bit more grating and um, not quite as deep as the primordial. But just as abrasive. Alright, I'm going to do a roll-off between Muna and the person she's arguing with. I'm going to give Muna advantage because of your actions. Yeah, looks as though just barely beating out the larger one. He seems to lower his weapon, but he stares, seems to be staring daggers at Salinger for a moment. Um... And then, but he lowers, lowers his knife, takes it, uh, has to step back. You see the others as well seem to take the cue, stepping back a bit, lowering their weapons. And you see it in the Muna, after uh, keeping an eye on that one for a minute, spins around to each of you. Her eyes are wild. She's... Friends. Maria nods emphatically. Yeah, fr friends. I just wave. Hi. <laughs> so Muna steps closer to each of you and her tail swishing back and forth. And as she moves close to Salinger, and, uh, kind of reaches up and it seems to almost seems to like wince as she reaches uh, up towards the arrow. Almost touches it, but doesn't quite. Oh, don't worry about that. It's fine. Um, he says as he snaps it and tries to keep a straight face. Um, Mis mistake. Yeah, we all make them. She looks at each of you. How? Home far. Yeah, you too, girl. What have you been up to? Find more. Yes, you did. Friends? You see her? Her feathers kind of ruffle in a complicated pattern. Friends. Right, pointing back the way that they had come. Not friends. Undead. Uh, uh. Undead? I mean, not anymore. You fixed that. No, they're re undead. No, re dead. Un, 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 un undead. They're just dead now. Yeah. My guess is we don't really want him going that direction anyway, towards town. Um, roll a perception check. Me? Me? Anyone wants to. I'm going to try, but... I'm just going to let the 20 something. Oh, I'm out. sorry, Pete. <laughs> oh, I critically don't notice anything. You got like a feather in your eye. You're like, oh, God damn it. Um, Ishtalan, Casey, uh, you notice that uh, some of them, particularly the larger one, seems to be ornamented with humanoid looking bones. They look reasonably fresh. I think. Bishalon 
even though things seemed to simmer down, she did not step back into the firelight. She's still just out in the darkness, bone hands. It's not drawn anymore, but she's just watching what is going on. Just in case you recognize the bones. <laughs> is it know. Bach and Jorn? <laughs> you do not recognize the bones. Casey kind of takes a quick glance around it at their adornments and whatnot. And looks like they've been hunting around here. He says to no one in particular. Um, Muna kind of, her eyes kind of nictate a little bit and she can't her head. Looks at each of you and says, uh, why far? Undead. We... we spit. Danger. Yeah, we're saving the town. Close to to danger? Help. Why? To help people? Because if we stop the danger, the danger won't get to us or other people we call friends. Gabeth points towards, like, uh, the, we're still kind of near the group of villagers, right? Martin. We parted ways. No, you have, you just have, like, the kids and Samsel with you. Uh, then I point to them, who Luna obviously doesn't know, and I just say, help them. And then I and say danger. Yeah, Muna always seems to understand what you're saying, despite her inability to sometimes communicate. Yeah, Kebeth still talks this way. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sure. No, just remind me because it's been a while. Um, yeah, and Muna nods slowly. Help. You uh, you probably notice um, some of one of the uh, the Aranakis hunters. You see him spying the children. There's like a salivation drips on the ground. I search for a, a meat snack in my pocket that is hopefully not made of worn out <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna introduce Mad Cow. I'll pull out some rations and, and kind of, um, I, I think I'll offer them first to the really big one. Oh, so you, yeah, so you approach the large one. He's taking a step back and he's lowered his weapon. And you, you, he narrows his eyes and you hear him kind of half snarl, half hiss a bit as you approach. I'm holding out snacks in my hands and, and I just say, friends? And I hmm. go to offer food. Hmm. Roll persuasion. My hands roll very flat, like, like you would feed a horse. <laughs> roll a persuasion check. You don't want to lose any digits when they try to take that apple, right? I'm going to use my one and only stack point to do that again. <laughs> okay. You do you do you want a point to use instead of mine? <laughs> you got some to spare? I actually have a regular inspiration. I think we can give those to, via the merit badge, right? Yeah, the merit badge lets you do your inspirations with each other. Yeah. So if you get another one, then I can't help you. But <laughs> uh. Or, hear me out, you could keep the one and lose a hand. That sounds terrible. I'm not going to do that. That would make a really my, cool my inspiration girl. Thank you for the inspiration. I rolled an 11 this time. At least it's not a natural one. <laughs> not a natural you see um, there's a quick snarl from the creature and he smacks your hand and knocks the snack onto the ground. I look sad and I I pick it up and I put it back in my pocket. It's got a bit of snow on it now. Muna, how, m how many are you? Um, see, Muna turns back to them. There's some more moments of arguing um, with her and she kind of uh, gestures and the big one, his feathers kind of furl up and hers furl up. Or, or, yeah. um, and the, but uh, the big one kind of barks a sound 
and then he turns and starts to walk away and they look like the other hunters uh, join him in leaving um, you're crunching in the snows they kind of leave you alone with Muna and they seem to be heading at least a, a little bit of the ways um, to the north and Muna watches them go for a minute between before turning back to all of you it says uh, Seven here. Seem did we see more than seven? Were there more seven in that group? No, no, it was seven. It was counting seven. seven. What about there? How many are there? Two hands. Six. I mean, I was never able to count that high. Sixteen. And where are you guys camped at? Where you hold up? More north. Want north. home. As make home. Door. Well, yeah, As was here just a. Yeah, you lock him. Wait, As was here. It's not here. Muna knows who As is, though. Do He'll probably be back soon, Luna. Door gone. Door home gone. He's trying to get back then. They home. Um... Casey kind of turns to Salinger and says, I mean, if, if we know where they're staying, once we find Ez, we can potentially open up a gate so they can go back through, huh? Like we did with the water. He kind of points at it as Shalana stops for a moment. Yeah, I mean, he could open up a... Oh, um, yeah, maybe it was good. Muna, he says, thinking about what Casey just said, what are the chances of us, and he puts his hands out, motioning to the group, and them becoming friends. And she seems to consider, look, you're able to recognize she looks a little uncertain. And her eyes kind of snap back to you and says, Not bad, not friend. They want to go home? Home. I think we should try to help them if we can. Just need us back. Yeah, Muna, we, we don't know the timing of this all. We kind of been losing track of one another sometimes. But once as is back from wherever, whenever he might be, he should be able to do that, right? I mean, she kind of looks at, at Casey. Right? He's got he's got a good good handle on that knocker thing, right? Now. Yeah. yeah, no question. He'll be able to open the door. Well, you've seen him do it before. You couldn't do it, Casey. I mean, he uses his door jam, yeah. I mean, that kind of looks kind of hesitant. She glances back over her shoulder and looks back at you guys, and she says. Cold. Little food. Eat. Eat, friends. I think at this point are the other seven. That that wasn't including Muna, right? That's uh, yeah. Six, yeah, six of them plus Muna. Okay, are the other six 
out of sight or pretty well away. Yeah, they're pretty, they're but, pretty well. Huh? I mean, you, you, I think, I think you, it, good. I think it's one of the point it would then step back into the firelight, um, and says, "And how many friends did your friends eat? How much of Shepherd's End is left?" Uh, Mira looks at Shalon and kind of cancer head and seems to sniff the air a bit. Looks confused. Um, and then, after a moment of hesitation, says, um, Not eat home. E eat road. Eat. Not friends. But I remember when, you know. We had that conversation in the alley about that, how it, you know, we talked about how it was all right to defend yourself and all this. Uh, and, you know, you got to do what you have to do to survive, of course, but uh, I'm distracted by the cat. It's adorable. But we also, well, folks, folks are struggling all around and, and we're trying not to uh, kill other people. Thinking, feeling, folk. Hmm. They not know friends ever in past. Think hunting them. But they weren't around when the facing off the deep lurker. Could have pointed them toward the huge carcass. You do realize, though, we are not very far away from a city that no longer has undead and has... And she just lets the trails off. He just sort of take a step forward, but um, her gun's down by her side now. Uh, she'll say, I think what what we're all worried about, Muna, is the fact that your all new friends uh, seem to be seeing, thinking, feeling folk persons, right? right? Like like us all. You know, we're all different types and different colors, different heights and all that. And uh, But, you know, we're all thinking, feeling folk. And so you don't kill thinking, feeling folk. Uh, even if they're just travelers on the road. You know what I'm saying? That That's the sort of thing that that well you know, we're going to try and get you back to your place, but until we can do that, you and your friends all have to promise to, to stop with the uh, killing and eating of, of folk, please. We can help you find something else. Certain. Um, Michelin? Did we close that one that was that led to the um, big warm place at the Arnoxes and the Arnoxes? The Arnoxes went, went to a jungle, but we also have Priestess. Right, but did we close that portal? Or we, we only the only purposefully closed one was the ocean. But the Angel of Doors is up to no good. So yeah. no, I, I thought we closed the forest one as well. Didn't we close the one in the forest that had the tracks all around it? I was under the, a, I was under the impression that one was closed. Uh, yeah, I thought we did that. <laughs> Just going shit, shit. <laughs> I don't. I actually honestly don't remember. So I'm looking. Yeah, I, I didn't that, remember either. I thought that was the test run. Yeah, that's what I remember as well. That sounds right. And now I have regrets. <laughs> oh, I know we stranded seven lizard people here. Time um, to pitch them on a desert plane. But Muna says so Muna looks uncertain for a minute, and you see her, her feathers all shifting in these complex. Um, uh, variations, and then uh, she looks back and says, um, "They not listen, not eat."
Yeah, I understand that too. Try, teach, not listen. It's going to complicate things. I unfortunately don't know if we have better alternatives to provide for them as much as we'd like to. Better alternative? Surely there's got to be a better alternative than them killing and eating folks that are traveling around the road. I mean... Once Ez is here, we can open the door back up and it'll be fine. We probably just need to stall for a, an hour or two and just... Make sure they don't, you know, hunt down the rest of the folks in Merwood till then. She just stares to you, blinks a few times, just waiting. Probably, probably more, more than likely at that point. Like, uh, maybe Poppy kind of comes forward and Muna uh, sees her and kneels down. You see their feathers, like, fluffing up and almost done conversation. So how do we delay them a few hours? Well, they're not an active threat right now. Um, Muna, uh, your all new friends aren't going to attack us imminently like that presently within I'm, the next few moments. I, I ain't worried about us, but you've seen Kabeth when she's hangry. Imagine, uh, no offense, these folks seem to have a much less pleasant disposition um, when it comes to... They're cold and hungry. And food got more scarce, especially with the winter and everything. So, I mean, Muna, where where are you going next? Do we have one of the maps? <laughs> Will Muna recognize a map? Mm, I think you guys tried to show Muna a map before and she had a hard time understanding it. Muna... We have to find Ez, but how can we find you? Help you get home. And she uh, kind of, uh, scratches Poppy on the head, then stands up and looks at you and says, uh, Find again. Casey, m make light noise. Yeah, and we find as I could do that. If you guys have a place in the north, we can kind of get in the ball, get close. Yeah, she says, um, cave near egg. Okay. Yeah, we know where that is. She kind of looks uncertain and says, um, and you see her feathers kind of fold down a little bit. Um, she says, um, Hunters eat road. Yeah, in the meantime, what if we gave you something else to eat to bring back to them. They wouldn't take it from us, but do you think if we gave you some what do we have? Some dried meat? He says, looking at Peach and the others. So what you have is Arnaka's meat. I know, that's why I'm looking nervously at everyone else.
Um, she said, Muna says, um, hunters eat tree eaters too. I mean, if you guys are hunting the road, potentially we can have people not travel on the road and not run into each other, huh? She kind of seems uncertain again and says, Hunters eat road past. Are you saying you encountered a large group of folks similar to us on the road already? Not friends. Our acquaintances could have been friends. Um, was there one with a funny hat and huge horns? I'm asking no. if the other group might have gotten ahead of us. Okay, just to make sure I was a character. Okay, well, that's a relief at least. Old stone. Slow, not young. Oh, uh, the old dragonborn physicer in that group we sent weeks ago. Bogging, bogging, and, and all them. Yeah, but that, but they're young. Think, oh. Maybe they just ate the old ones. <laughs> young, fast, young, gone. Okay, well, we, those were friends. Um, I'm gonna make a cup of tea. Let's make a cup of tea. We should not forget our manners in times like these. A uh, whole pot, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to do a quick head count of the small children that were with us. <laughs> They're all there. <laughs> Sompsel's got them all. By the way, I raised an eyebrow at Sompsel because I remember Sompsel. Beth has no idea who Sompsel is, but I know who Sompsel is. <laughs> I haven't been here, but I've been caught up. <laughs> How far do we have to go before we we're planning to part ways with um, the little ones, huh? Oh, you would have normally parted with them when you broke camp with you when you broke this camp. right here. I mean, Casey kind of looks down at the little ones near Samsul. Says to no one in particular. You are fast. I mean, I think since they're going east, camp's north, I can probably. The menace is, um, Hunters stay here. The door near here. Find door. Yeah, we have to find Ez first. Roll in, everybody roll in our comment. Check. Oh no. It's my best thing. I've been having weirdly good rolls the entire time. Most of the time I've been playing it's Wait, just unnerving. I have, I have something for this. It's even better because you were like, my best thing, and then you rolled a one. <laughs> no, but I have something for this. Yeah. 
Ah. Cunning recovery. It's on the reflex. Yeah. Man, I didn't give any of my abilities any cool names, and I feel like I need to come up with cool names for everything now, because yours are so good. <laughs> I agree. Not, I see that, really. and I'm like... Yeah. I'm like, um, oh, I also have that. Okay. Yeah, Ishtalan and Casey... Wait, you remember us talking something about this? He was really upset. He was talking really fast, but... Well, yeah. He can make the portals bigger or close them. He cannot open them. Well, that was part of the reason we were going to the tower, right? Because maybe there were notes there that could let him make the thing? be able to open new ones so that he could alter it and upgrade it. Well, I mean, he just got all that, those formulas from, from Magrin. I mean, if he said that he couldn't do something, then I am inclined to believe him. He said that before the formulas, though. I mean, he just has to spend a little time with them and then he'll be able to do it. I mean, he got us back here. But that was that we were already in a place of planes and doors. And that was returning us, well, returning you, to the places that you belonged. Not opening to an entirely different place and a specific place. I'm not sure, besides maybe wanting to go back and save innocence that any of this really changes what we have to do next although it would be nice that if Hesmond was here so that we're not just going to the tower and then bumbling around like dumb folks well keeping an eye on the other or not, um, well keeping an eye on them is a good idea we'll tell them that the solution or a possible solution is at the tower have them come with us they can't kill anyone if we're here and to be fair, Miss says to see a cup of tea. We bumble around like dumb fucks when Ez is here too. And he passed out a few cups. When you see, Maria is adding some of her herbs to your pot. When you, yeah, when you offer the cup to Muna, you see, uh, she sees it, and her posture changes, and she sits like on a log and sits very straight, kind of the way you taught her to drink tea. Uh, so her demeanor changes, and she like has her pinky out. And she, Well, I don't think that group's going to travel with us to the tower, if that's what you're suggesting, but... Not also, without risking us becoming snacks on the way, no. What do we, I also, why, why wouldn't they? I, I don't want to leave them here, Casey. I mean, they, we at least can have a watch and look out for one another. I don't want them, you know, falling upon the other group that's slower moving than we are. And working with I mean, the elderly and the kids. Best they stay they alive. survived. Keep an eye. They survived a horde of slow-moving zombies. I don't think they would necessarily survive a pack of swift, deadly hunters. Exactly. All the more reason for the hunters With to come brains. With brains. So we can watch them. And besides, if Ez can't open up the door, perhaps they could... They'll become our friends, and they'll be, come, be able to help us, and they can help me go find the priestesses in the desert. And maybe the desert's a nice place for them. And if if anything that we've done so far is a clue, then wherever we all are is where his is likely to blink back up. So if they're along with us, then Esma's likely to appear along with the group when he does appear. So they'll have instant access to the person we promised them. I think you'd have better luck riding savagery than you would getting that group to travel with us for any reason other than to hunt. You know, I've got the record for savagery, Matt. That's not a good metaphor for me. All right, four minutes, 30. Fair enough. We're telling that there is a village near to the tower. I don't think dangling possible tasty human treats in front of them is the right motivation. I think that they should come with us. I mean... We don't even know if there's anyone still there. 
And if it gets in the way from the tasty human threads that we know exist. I say we... I say we invite them with us. The solution to the... Any solution, if there is a solution, is this way anyway. That's what and I'm we, saying. Yeah. And we can watch them in, as a bonus. And, and getting convincing them is your job, Casey. You're the one that's good at talking. Muna, Muna kind of fluffs a little bit. Says, uh... Hmm. Hunters do before think dangerous. And predictable. Which means we know how they're going to react to what we're trying to do. If this were like an old story, I would just challenge their leader to a duel of honor, give them a wallop, and they'd all fall in line. That sounds actually like a very good plan. Muna blinks. I was being facetious. Muna blinks, look at Salinger, and she nods. She says, Salinger, big. Leader, want eat. Salinger, big. Take skull. Wait. Would that actually work? I'm Are here people this. winner who takes all? No, no, she's talking winner eats other. No, and something. Hunter follow strong, leader strong. I will heal your your shoulder right now so that you can possibly do this, Sal. Salander, do not Just... go one on one with. This is ludicrously uncivilized. He says he takes another sip of his tea. Mm, Muna looks nervous and she says, I thought duels were, were civilized. Yeah. In all the stories they are, they're heroic. Is this Wait, any but... less civilized than war? Is it to the death? Because if it's to the death, then, then you shouldn't, that's not a good idea. Salinger sh strong, leader strong, not no. Well, Strong if it looks like you're about to die, we can always kill the guy and then just kill the rest of them. No, I would oh, have to have your wall. And then she, she slides a lock side long to Muna. We're honestly trying not to kill any of them, Muna. This is... but... Strongest... Eat other... Oh, so I'd have to eat him? To seal the contract. She nods. So to the death, then. That that's to the death. That doesn't sound it's like not you to should... the death. If you have that's to eat the, the other eating. one. Yeah, you it's really don't stay alive during the eating. I mean, I certainly hope not. That would be even worse. Eat heart, eat small heart. You have two, two hearts. hearts. No problem. She blinks. I punch Casey in the shoulder, and I'm like, stop. This is ridiculous. He's not doing it. It's not. What? Why? Well, I personally like would place answer. my, my, you know, if I was a betting, a betting kind of priestess, I would bet on Sal. He's eaten recently. He's taken down bigger things, and they're starving in the woods, and they've only found a couple grandmas. If you give me your hold, I can bet for you. Starving in the woods makes things hungry and desperate. I don't want to pit Salinger against anything that might hurt him. I mean, Muna looks for Pete's sake. Muna looks uncertain. She says, "Leader strong." Why? Why would, why would Sal want to challenge their leader and to the death and then eat him just to have control of their group to make them go home. This is, I don't understand. It's, it's to prevent them from them. eating more children and elderly. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sure you were about to say the exact same thing. I mean, you're the one doing the fighting, so. Do you really think you could do it, Sal? I mean, I don't want to push you, but. I mean, if you think about it, like as would looking at all the variables. I mean, this is this is the only conclusion. 
No, that is not correct. Esmond would be upset with that. Well, okay, so let, let's we'll, let's make a list. Let as likes lists. Um, convince the the the. the Going to the tower will help them open the door to their home world and that we can take them back to where they where they want to be, where the food is more plentiful than here, right? Well, you, um, well you're doing the solutions, words, right? You're doing the solutions first, though. We need the variable. No, no, no. So, oh, uh, the variables are they're hungry and uh, disgruntled and Muna still likes us, and that's nice. But yeah. Muna doesn't well. have the, um, the, the leadership authority that the other one does and the other one wants to eat Sal. It specifically said it wanted to eat Sal. Yeah, and we have Question. like two groups of snacks, slow-moving snacks that are sure. moving to travel this road. But question. Let's say Sal does this and it starts to go bad for Sal and then we get involved. That might not be respected in their group. This could make things much worse. Well, I have like, nothing but faith in Sal. I honestly think that he can do it. Yeah. I mean, what's worse? If we die, then they're going to go off and kill people anyway. Uh, okay. If they die, then we don't have to worry about it anymore. And if we don't bring them along, they'll probably go off and kill people anyway. We're talking about potentially having to kill all of... And she gestures to Muna's, Muna, all of her new family and friends. There's, there's no potential. This is Sal we're talking about here. I mean, I think he's only gonna have to first. kill the angriest one, the one that wants to eat him already. The one, only it only wants to eat you, Sal, because you're the largest among us and therefore probably the most delicious. But it wouldn't be long before it decided to start and eat the rest of us. We're, we're just. We're like after you eat a meal and then you have more meal. Sure. Well, flattery isn't going to convince me to do this. No, but magic. Not. No, I don't mean that to convince you to do it. But I mean, I I could do some blessings on you, and you're not. I mean, I just don't know if that will actually be accepted by them. It might be seen the same as cheating. However, oh. I think the idea to we should invite them along first so that we can avoid single dual situations and if that doesn't work then Valentine should challenge the leader to a duel winner eats hearts of butter uh, uh so win win that's not really a win lose I suppose but I agree with Ixlan I feel like we'll try to negotiate first and then if it comes down to a fight it comes down to a fight but Salander are you are you okay with and Pete just kind of like wide eyed, looking up at Sal, like, like this. He, he's smart, right? This isn't like fighting the big Aranakis that couldn't think, and we could just, you know, take pot shots at him from far. This, this is a smart, like, person type thing that. That was wearing careful. the bones of folks that we met and saved um, as trophies. All right. The most good is only killing one of them. If it comes to that, and saving all the travelers that they think are just road snacks. I'll do what I have conditions. Well, what do you think you would need? Can you study their ways? And the conditions are from the lot of you, he oh. says, looking around at everybody else. No well, interference, no help, and no matter how it goes, if I'm winning or losing, you let it go. Would Those you? are the rules. Otherwise, no. we leave it alone. I mean, I have a ring that you could wear that will help you take less damage. Would you do that kind of help? At least let us give you a boost of confidence. You know, a, a little cheer, a raw blessing. No, that's no Agreed. I'm going to use the same tools he has, nothing more. Wait, 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 wait. No, his tools are claws and feathers, and that's not what you're proposing. Don't... You don't... No. Sal, you don't have armor. I know that it's not your your look. It's not your aesthetic, but but sharp things will cut you. Or He's got... He's literally... 
armed and, and protected by the bones of people that we know. And you can't go in there just looking the way you look and just expect to be able to fight him in a gentleman's duel. He will kill you. Wait, what do you... Mina you know, looks uncertain. She says, Salinger strong, leader strong. Muna not know. It's not that I don't think that you can do it, just... Don't underestimate him. I'm not underestimating him, those are just my preconditions. We don't have well, to do this, but I'll do it on behalf of protecting other people, as long as it's done the right way. You're not going to do it, like, without a weapon, right? No, of course I have a weapon. Oh, okay, because, okay. But if he's using a bone club, I'll probably use a bone club. No, Sal. Although I don't think you should use the priestess's hammer for this one because I don't think she. I was really going to say, did you just get a, a really cool looking hammer? This is like a yeah, perfect feels, time to test it out. Uh, yeah, you're I protecting so. innocence. It is. That's, act, that's that's a really good argument, Ishalan. He is protecting innocence, and I think that um, Brunhilde would would actually condone that. All right, but no armor. Well, but you don't wear armor anyway, right? No. Muna says, one fights one. Way. Absolutely, yeah. Just one. None of your shenanigans, no spells. What about no help, Poppy? No backup. Poppy knows what to do. Okay. He says, and her feathers kind of shift through his color palette like a little rainbow for a second. To be clear, I don't like this, and I don't condone this at all. I think that there are other ways. Yeah, probably. This way is probably the cleanest, though. It's also, may I remind, a uh, second level. We, first, we can see if we can tell, get them to come with us. That's true. And if you do lose Sal, and you're not letting us interfere, then what happened, like, by their rules, don't we have to follow their leader? Yeah, probably. Or they, or they eat us. Yeah. Why? Why would that not be the rule? Is it the rule is the biggest leader controls the group. That's why we're doing it. If, we, if Sal wins, then he's the leader of their group. If Sal loses, then we're now following their leader by their rules. Muna, am I putting them on the line if I do this? Muna says. Leader, fight Salinger, Salinger, big. Leader, not see soft skin as kind. So the rest of you aren't a threat. It don't matter. It's just me. Luna, if, we, if he loses, do they eat us? They can dry. Might. Maybe eat. So, so now I want to invent a lotion that's also spicy. Too spicy. I feel like bitter is a better way to go. <laughs> <gasps> True. Sal, no pressure. I still think, I really do think that you could do it. I do think you deserve a couple prayers in your court. I don't see how the faith of your friends is an unfair advantage. I agree. I think you should let us at least prepare you as much as we can. You're going out there with... At least let us give you what we can. Although we'll try to talk to them first. And make them see reason. It does not the breastplate that she's wearing and says, if they're traveling with us for a bit, also it seems like it helps with the padding if there's something you're interested in. Out of character, I got lost in your accent. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> she knocks on her breastplate and says, it seems like this gives a little bit of uh, extra padding every few seconds too. 
If you can use the weapon, I think you can use this. Other guys got skills after all. Uh, it's the Dead Forge breastplate that gives you like 4 temp HP per round at the beginning of your turn. Mm. But it actually lowers my AC. Oh, yeah, you looked. Oh, oh, Ishlan, you weren't here for it, but. You don't have a plus but two. Sal Oops. looked horrible in that armor. It did nothing for him. It's not the look, I feel like. It didn't fit him right, it made it worse. And he looked like a zombie, and I ran screaming through a window, so. Let the guy decide for himself. If he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. No, it's a generous, a generous notion. Do we want to try diplomacy and then violence if it fails, or do we just want to avoid this problem entirely and go straight to the tower? I'm amenable to either. I'm just saying I'll do my part if that's what we think is the best course of action. Menaces, well, what reason hunters walk with friends? Because when Esmond shows back up, he'll be able to open up a door for you. Hopefully. Esmond... Tra- get home. Friends walk to Esmond? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're all going to the tower, and we're hoping that Esmond will be back with us by the time we make it there. And then Esmond can open a door to send you home where it's warm and there's food. Pretty egg- and if that's not... Pretty egg girl tell hunters walk to door. Hunters understand. Yeah. Yeah. It might be a couple days walk. Oh, it's a different door. Uh, there's a tool at a tower that we need. Once we're at the tower, Esmond, and at the yeah. tower, once we've got those two things, then we can open a door. Hunters, about that detail. Hunters, th- no door near home. Think of it more like a key to open the door, like a handle that's missing. That's what we're going to get. Like, sometimes you need a claw to slice open a creature to get at the entrails inside. So we're looking for a claw. Girl? Pretty a girl, understand. Moon, are you safe with them? Are you okay? Sal says, give it one more cup of tea. Hunter like Muna. Same kind. And you like hunters? You can see her pattern's gonna shift. Confusion. She says, same kind. Well, I'm not the same kind as anyone here, but I I much prefer to be with them. That just solidifies that I'm willing to fight him, if you all think I should. And it kind of looks at Araya and blinks. Temperance. Did you say imprints? Temperance. That was just one of the words you taught her. <laughs> yeah, we, we put up with her. But... No, I think... Getting the group to travel with us so the heat's off the little ones until this returns and we can open the portal for him is the way to go.
and LaSalle just wants to fight him. I mean, that's fine, too. I will say he did not make a great initial impression, and I would not mind fighting him. I? Honestly, Sal, I think you could do it. Let's do that, then. Muna? Do you want to lead the way? To Esmond? To Hunters? I mean, to the Hunters. I'm kind of some business to attend to. Yes, after yeah. tea. She sips. Of course. She's been taught well. As they're sitting down to tea, Case Hill kind of nod to Samsel. Yeah, so, yeah Samsel kind of comes over. That sounds fucking nuts! Yeah, we're still parting ways here, though. You four are heading to Shepherd's End. And us going to meet with the hunters. And do what we do there. We'll keep the heat off of you so that you can have safe travels there, yeah. I get it. So we're going to go north, but you're going to hold them back so that we have time to get away. Yeah, more or less. All right, I can do that. But you heard what they said. I mean, faster is better, so. You guys are, I know you three are fast. Some's all I haven't seen you run but you, I mean you look fast so running's probably the way to go if you do encounter him what do you want because you're going to hold him back yeah exactly alright I'll get him ready Casey turns back to the rest of the party and says the people in Mirwood are waiting for our word, right? They're not just going to randomly start traveling down the road. I thought we had... No, there was a time limit on that. Yeah, they kind of separated off to ships, if I remember correctly. I thought I it was for at least road. weeks, though. Yeah, that's oh, right. Good. Yeah, you are correct. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so if they're in town for the next couple of weeks... I don't think the hunters will have to go into the town to hunt. Is there a way to send a message to them? Maybe a warning of some kind? Just give the folks of Mirwood a heads up that there might be hostiles in the area. Yeah, I mean, maybe if we had Zephyrus or one of the stones. Did we leave one of the stones back there? You left one of the etch and sketch stones with, uh-uh. Briggs. No, wait. So, no. So, yeah, yeah Bri so, Briggs, with and, Briggs and, and Sam still has the other. Yeah. yeah. So technically we still have it. Yeah. Yeah, one of the stones, Sam, so you can maybe send a message back to town. Oh, do you want me to draw do you want me to draw a picture and send it? I can do it right now. I'm kinda I'm kinda anxious to use it. Yeah. Yeah, give picture? it a go. Okay, what should I send? Or can you write words? Uh, that seems kind of tough. I mean, maybe like all the words, all the letters have to be connected. Like, it'd be kind of like writing, but um, like you can't so, you can't stop writing. I mean, more or less, we need a road, and then like maybe two people, and then them surrounded by probably creatures that look like Poppy. I could, that could do that. It would be super clear. I could do that. Yeah. And then maybe some skulls and crossbones around the road. That's a good idea. That would let them know it's dangerous. Okay, I'm on it. Yeah. Muna, how far to where you guys are? The cave. Cave. Cave far. Hunter's close. If Salinger bites? In Hunter Way. 
top top sun time top sun time high noon no there was that's auspicious It's the only time to have a duel, though. Oh, that's also traditional. After first meal. How are we going to tell when it's high noon, though, without Ez? I mean, the sun is always up. I, know, I still... think the mo topmost of the sun. It's still there's there's still a, a short evening. There's a three hour evening. It's evening right now. Yeah. But Casey doesn't pay too much attention mm, to the nuance of the solar bodies or the celestial bodies. Casey doesn't care about time. Well then, pretty egg girl tell hunters travel door or fight. Casey looks at Sal. Um, can't talk more. It depends. Yeah, it depends on. If we just go to fight, we probably have their loyalty far more so, and we'd be safer. If we start with diplomacy, they'd question when we move to fighting, and I don't know if we'd completely establish trust with the rest of them, just based on what I've heard Muna describe. So it's risk management at that point. Hunters fight so often, fight food, fight meat. Wait, so Salinger, am I understanding correct that you plan to fight this person regardless? Because if diplomacy fails, then what in the world? Diplomacy first. Seems, I think fighting is diplomacy culturally based on what I'm picking up here. Hunters yeah. fight uh, many times, walk together, maybe fight. I'm sorry, Kabeth, I interrupted you. Uh, yeah, Kabeth says, Sal, diplomacy, but also f you have to kill him and eat him. And eat him. By their traditions, yes. Possibly raw. That would be barbaric. I, mean, I, 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 I think that would be winner's choice, right? Uh, by their traditions. You can safely I'm eat a heart and a liver, and I don't know about anything else. How do you know this? What do you mean? I study medical books frequently. It talks about the health benefits of the liver and the heart of various creatures to help and aid in the healing of weakened people. Best parts? You, you lose the nutrients by cooking it off. Boiling it would be the worst. Unless you plan to drink the broth, but then even still, it renders a lot of those nutrients useless. Peach is going to put her hand on Athelia's arm and say, Athelia, honey, look. Araya, Araya, oh my god, Araya, Araya, sorry, just jumping backward in time, putting her hand on Araya's arm and, and just say, hey, honey, don't lean into stereotypes, okay, you don't need folks thinking you're a cannibal when you got the hole. I wasn't talking about people, I was talking about organ meat and its health benefits. I didn't mean, no, okay, it's not a practice. Yeah, Beth, stop licking your lips. <laughs> Okay, Beth just puts a hand on, on Peach and Ray and says, No, Ray is right about the cooking part.
part. And that's that makes total sense for, you know, cooking medical. Don't, don't worry about it. All right. Don't don't listen to it. it out fine. in my book. It's fine. Regardless, He's... my point stands to Sal about are you prepared to do this? Glaring at Casey for tossing suspicion her way. Casey, Casey's leaned back. Tell me more about this maiden. Wait, really? Food got Not you right now. Food in the maiden? Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> I don't know. I appreciated the deflections there for a moment, but. No, I do not relish the thought of what would have to be done if I were to win this hypothetical duel. But if it saves innocent lives. All right, but what if you lose, Salinger? What What are we supposed to do if you're lying there, bleeding out from some gut wound made with a bone spear, and um, Doc's not around because she's disappeared, and we can't? I won't help let you. him what die. We... Okay, but like we, I like, will kill them all. I won't let him die. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Those were my stipulations that you no. don't want here. Well, if you lose, then the, <laughs> if it, Talon then it's leans done. over to Araya and is like. Up. We can do it without him knowing. Okay, but if he loses, we have to watch him get eaten. Just my heart, not the whole thing. Well, let's you cross cannot. that bridge when we get there. Sal, you're not going to lose. No, obviously. No. I've seen you fight. You're not going to lose. It's not even an option. So don't entertain a, a dead end. A dead end uh, decision making branch. It's, it's never going to happen. Y'all are a conundrum of confusing confidence variables. I I was hoping all up, but I'm getting a real roller coaster ride here from some of you. Salinger, I accept your terms. And I will ensure the rest of them respect them as well. If you are to fall. There we go. Look, I'll stand by and I'll watch you fight, Sal, but... If you fall, somebody's gonna have to hold me back from. Uh, yeah. From. <laughs> I can't promise I will let you die in front of me, Salinger Moral. But he's not gonna lose. It's for the best. It is the most. Of all the outcomes, this one would provide us with the absolute most good. And regardless of the situation, it would be the cost of one life instead of possibly dozens, yes. And it's not going to be yours. It's going to be that, the, the big one that Muna doesn't like. Definitely not. I mean, he, he looks over at Muna, civilized, legs crossed, sipping a cup of tea. There's potential here, and they just have bad leadership. Okay, I stand, but still, if if Sal loses, reminder that we're seen as food, and then we'll be seen as more weak because he will have defeated the biggest one amongst us. Even though Sal, although you are very strong, you are not necessarily always the biggest and strongest. Oh, that's a good point, Kabeth. Yeah, if oh Kabeth, did fall, you want it? Here's the backup plan. Here, here's the backup plan. If I fall, you get big. You'll yes. immediately redirect their attention, and then you could challenge for leadership from whoever tries to take it. I hate it's probably that already plan, weakened at that point. Yeah, you could just stomp on him. I mean, probably be I fair just too. don't want us to get eaten because as, you know, after having watched you get eaten, it's just we're a not, bad day. We're not going to This is going to be well. That could possibly be a, a risk. I mean, it's either they try to eat us if Sal loses, or we have to kill them all. And this is no, just no. Sal. Sal loses. You get big and immediately challenge for leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's another happen, one on one. It's, and then it's Sal reassuring. Won't be right? Eaten yet? I turn to Muna. Muna, would they accept that if if Sal loses, or would they accept another challenge right away? Meaningful glances to Ishalon. And leader. Hungry again. So next day. Yeah, high noon. It's just lunch waits until Sal is looking away and then she winks at Araya. But that is the caveat. Good point, Kabeth. If they try to eat us, we will decimate them. I 
So we doing this, we're going to keep dancing around it all night. We're going to do this. I believe in you, Sal. And it was your idea. You're brilliant. Technically, I was just mentioning what would happen in a storybook, and all of you kind of gravitated onto it. And then, yeah, you convinced me. But it, I wouldn't call it my idea. Yeah, it was definitely your idea. I'm going to put that down in uh, a Doc's journal. We're doing this, but tea first. I have some bread. Half a fresh loaf of little bread. Like, hey. Pass it around. As the, as the fire crackles in the night, the horizon begins to lighten a bit with the strange color for which there is not a name. Muna sips last of her tea and carefully sets the cup and the saucer down. She, uh, she looks at each of you and says, Pretty echo good to leader? And she stands and starts to walk and then she pauses, looks back, comes back to Sal. And says, Leader sh Muna see no. Leader, colors of woods, black teeth of rock, lizard. And good, good, that Salinger, no. And then she uh, turns, heads off towards where the, uh, the others are camped. We could still back out. We could. Uh, this is Wait. this is a terrible idea. I really hate this idea. I really think that we should just bring them with us to find Ez. Ez, well, we haven't had any luck forcing someone to come back when they're kind of shifted. So there's no finding him. But if we're going to help them, we will need Ez. But that's a that's a different problem. They're not going to let us help them unless, well. I mean, was she mentioning that leader might not have been the big one that was just in the group before? Was that the same colors as that one? Was it a gr green forest, black teeth? Wait, what did it look like? The the what are we calling the these one? people? Pretty egg girls. I know, but no. Pretty egg folks. Egg folk. Folk. Pretty egg gang. Yeah. Pretty egg gang. So, was the really aggressive one matching that description she gave us, or we have yet to meet who the leader is? Those descriptors were a warning about some of his um, capabilities and tendencies. I believe, not necessarily a physical descriptor. Oh, so he changes when he fights. What do you think black teeth means? It was black, right? Then teeth of stone. Oh. Teeth of stone. Oh, but the Aranarchus's teeth were ridiculously hard in the claws too, right? I, we're losing time. Sal, are you sure you want to do this? I can still catch her. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think it's fine. I'm formally putting in my protest. I don't like this at all. Duly noted. AC looks down we at have, the ground. Uh, we have two against and four for, I believe. Do we? Oh, well, else is against. You. No, Sal, you gotta do what you gotta do. I just... I won't let you die. But you gotta fight your fight. I support you. Well, she's gone. What's for breakfast? Or an jerky. Seems appropriate. Yeah, 
get yourself in the fighting spirit. Maybe a little, a little dark. Is the piece that got smacked to the ground still there, Kabeth? Oh no, Kabeth ate that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Five it was in the snow. Five round roll. <laughs> it was in the snow. It was totally clean. It was fine. Kabeth, Kabeth says, it's a shame I never made any shields or armor out of Aranaka's bone. Or that Ava was here. I feel like I, I, the player, can't remember what we made Ava's shield out of, but I thought it was Oranakis. Oranakis. Yeah. yeah, I bet since they wore the bones of the things they ate, we could have shown off the things that we ate, and and they would have respected us more. I really, hmm. Araya thinks, not says anything about the bone inside of her pouch. Hmm. I don't know how much it would help. As the sun begins to climb up above the horizon, it's a strangely beautiful, calm day. The snow is pretty light. Well, it's still, still winter. It's, it doesn't seem so bitterly cold. Uh, perhaps from the nearby anomaly in the forest, there are fireflies that have made their way over. Samsol and the three children. Pig, Dole, and Fila. And you see them packing up the last of their supplies, and Samsa looks at all of you and says, uh, Well, um, we should probably be on our way if you're going to hold them off. Where's. Yeah, I mean, get a head start. Everything's going to be fine. We'll see you back at Shep's end. After we get to the tower. And Everything will be solved. Yeah. Um, yeah, there won't be any problems. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go now. Uh, hey, good luck and thanks. See you soon. Uh, running off to the train tracks. Immediately yeah, shot by arrows. Uh, you guys have a full, a full long morning before the time would come where Salinger's duel, the Ornox leader, happened. Uh, Shalon's going to get a nap in, or at least she's going to get herself a rest. Yeah. Oh, um, you, you guys get a long rest, like you're. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but also, I think at some point. Maybe shortly before Central the gang left, uh, she would have gone into what she and Araya saw. Uh, do it in character. Share, oh, okay. share it with Samsel. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. You can flash back to that. Uh, as, you know, sort of watching Muna disappear into the horizon, uh, Shalon says, Also, uh, Araya and I weren't just making out in the darkness. We actually found a, um, a not a portal exactly, a thinness uh, to a, a different plane called uh, Silas called it the way Feywild, I believe. Um, if if we can't reopen a place f for the. For the egg people to go to, don't you think the Feywild might be a wonderful alternative? That there's actually a possibility. It's not. I don't think it is strong enough to get through. But if no, it but is, that might be a. It, it might be a good thing to offer them, and also there was one such link into the Pale Lands to the Feywild that was always there. It wasn't a door exactly, but it was a constant. And if we go to the Fey Wilds, we might be able to find this other link to get back through the Pale Lands. Just uh, sorry, quick out of character correction. Um, a, a link between the Fey Wild and the place between, not the Pale. 
Sorry. Oh, sorry. Retcon all like draw a little line through all the thing I said pale lance and instrument play between. So if from what I've heard of the Feywild, it seems like the store gem device that Esmond has might be safer. Um, but it it is an option. I mean yeah, especially if that's where Shalati is in between. Also, it's much warmer there, so maybe we could just like move up camp over a little bit. Uh, I sort of feel like autumn, not winter. You know, that's... If it's safe in that it's a thin spot, but not one you'll cut through. Even the cold air, there's always just a vague bit of steam coming off of Casey. Casey's that's why like at night everybody sort of just gravitates closer to Casey and, like the Casey or the campfire Casey eventually turns into like one of those oceanic underwater vents <laughs> a little coral or a little forest starts spinning up running we both speak Ignan so so as you see the the golden sun still lay on the horizon. It never rises very high, but a bit of warmth does spread across you know, the snowy forest. And do you guys want to spend your potentially last day with Salinger? Are you really sure you don't want me to lay a blessing on you before the fight? It is within a, a story right you know, fairy godmothers, right? It, it, Story-wise, it's permitted. You're not going to convince me to give myself an unfair advantage in a dual honor. It's not fair if you've got your friend's goddess looking out for your back. They it's have kinda. friends. Well, they might have gods as well, giving them a little boost. I don't see... That's an awfully interesting assumption you're making that they don't have a god on there. If they cheat, it'll just make it that much more satisfying when I win. It's not cheating. Don't be silly, Araya, uh, Casey says from a di little distance away. Salinger's got this, right? Hey, <gasps> God! Oh, God, and don't, don't! He, he hucks a snowball at Salinger. Is there a roll, or is it going to say what happens? I don't know, Chris. You roll hit. Oh, okay. Is this just dex, strength, or dex? Or it's the, certainly dex. I would imagine. You're just trying to hit him, right? Yeah. Yeah, dex. Unless his reflexes are good. That's a natural 20. Sound means I'm in sick concussion. That tells the story. <laughs> As the snowball explodes on the back of Salinger's head, there was a rock hidden inside <laughs> that breaks his skull. No, just kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the snowball was deadly accurate and Casey was fully expecting Salinger to turn and knock the snowball from the air, but it, um, it hits him square in the back and just explodes in a powdery mist. You're going to have to be faster than that if you're going to win. Ah! throws another one. <laughs> 16 to hit. Sal turns as the second one's colliding towards him after he felt the first one pelt on his back. Doesn't try to dodge and move out of the way, just has a big grin and lets it hit him right in the jaw. I'm gonna be fine, he says to see ya brushes the back of his hand across it, wiping off a little bit of snow. 
Yeah. Casey leans down, packs up another handful of snow and starts to pack it. If you make it to the fight, kind of sidesteps over to next to a tree, ducks behind it. Sal is sitting on a log, and he picks it up and rolls it at the tree. Casey's behind the tree, so... I know. So there's going to be a loud thunk as the log hits it, and all the snow from all the branches comes raining down all over Casey. <laughs> Gotta get a deck save. That's <laughs> like saving through. Deck save 22. Yeah, Casey leaps to the side as the snow runs down his back. Ah, and he kind of twinges a little bit as it hits his skin and melts and lets a little steam up and slides and rolls into the snow and up into a three-point position. Yeah, now you think it's smart. In case you'll kind of shake off a bit and nod as he comes back up to the group and yeah this is going to be good Casey roll perception check oh. yeah. during a your snowball altercation with Salinger Poppy ate the left rest of your breakfast Casey locks eyes with Poppy and raises an eyebrow. Kind of glances over to his food, where his food was. Back to Poppy. Mm. This is going to be good. Sal, are you still hungry? Do you want... Do you need anything? I have a little bit more bread. Carbs are very good for uh, sports and battle. And off, I'm all full up. Gotta let me help you somehow. You're helping right now. Can I, like, carry something to the... <sighs> okay. Shall on spends... Oh, sorry, where are you done? No, go ahead. Shall on spends some of the morning scouting out the area and kind of clearing out an area from snow to provide like, a little... Fighting ring. I thought this was actually just all planes. Is it forest? No, no, there's, you're, there's definitely forest where you are. Okay. Um, then she also spends a little bit of time looking up a good stout tree that she can just perch in um, at some point for a good view of this little ring that she's trying to clear out. But at some point she pulls aside basically all the girls here one-on-one <laughs> -on -one. um uh i guess we'll go with peach first and uh she stops and puts a hand on her shoulder and says so we are agreed that when salazar goes down we just tilt the big guy the other big guy with everything we have right oh absolutely uh Salinger has my full support, and um, I think you okay. can do great. But uh, but yeah, no, of course not. I'm gonna have yeah my pistol trained on the guy we... the entire time. Yeah, no, we don't. Yeah, and if I can get a a bonus into him ahead of time before he says in that fight, I'm gonna try that too. I don't know if he'll necessarily want that, but at the very least, yes. Uh, once he's down, then we can do anything to guard him, and then. Pets her on the shoulder and then moves on to Kabeth, uh, where she says, um, she says to Kabeth, 
that's a good idea of if Salandra goes down, you get big and shadows the other guy. I think that's still a good idea, but there's no need for him to be completely dead before it happens, if you get my drift. Yeah, I agree. Um, avoiding the death of my friends is most important to me, so yeah, I, I can make it happen whenever. I wish he would accept some kind of spell help, but I guess it's probably for the best if, you know, I don't take any damage ahead of time as well. Focus on protecting him first, I think. I don't think. If it comes to that, he won't be in good shape. The nice thing is, I, and she points to her horns, I come in with some built-in weapons, too. Maybe not as fierce as teeth, but I pack a mean blow when I need she to. She grips and does like a fist horn bump. Uh, and then she'll go over to Araya and um, say, as soon as he, go he goes down, Kibeth and Peach and I will be doing something to uh, guard him or to take out the big one. Um, I fully intend to f focus on the uh, the big guy, so whatever we can do to help Salinger at that time. And she uh, looks at Jordan. There's no particular response, and she'll show the one. And um... I think she does stuff by Casey as well. Uh, uh, and unless he's in the middle of of sparring or snowball fighting with Salinger. Nah, he's, he's calmed down. He's just by the fire or something. Strolls up and tilts her head at him and says, so do you really intend to watch your friends just Well, I mean, that's not going to happen, so. But you I can at least trust you won't stop any of us if that does happen in an alternate reality that happens to happen here. Well, I mean, you have to go into the duel in good faith. Sure. He's definitely going in there with good faith. If, if Salinger loses, which will not happen, I mean, then he loses. I mean, he laid down his terms. You can ask him to repeat them, but if that's what he wants. I intend to honor that. She walks away. She is different. Each, what did you make for breakfast that morning? Make for breakfast. Uh, all right. So the morning. What's Salinger's favorite breakfast, Sean? Try to make my best on the road approximation. Mm. Garlic and mushroom quiche. Peach has forged and found some wild chives, and uh, she's got some dried mushrooms in that little spouse spice pouch that she has. Uh, it's not amazing, but uh, she's trying to see what she can find with regards to eggs. Peach, uh, Peach roll an intelligence check. Oh, you must die. I'm going to get poisoned. Danger mushrooms. Not the red ones with the white spots. They look the taste. Oh, I rolled a save. Oh. Roll the save back, so I'll do a check.
How do I do a check? Where is it? Not even smart enough to find the check. I think the save's probably fine, honestly. Okay, I that's fine. Same. Yeah, you remember. It's been there so long. It doesn't spoil. You have a handful of the blue laurel chicken eggs back from when you were going to make that quiche. Yes. Uh, so Peach is uh, putting together a... Uh, by the time I think folks start waking up and smell it over the campfire, it's a little wilder maybe, a little gamier than usual. Maybe the wild garlic is giving it kind of a fresher tang, but it smells like a very good omelet. Wait, you made an omelet instead of a quiche? I made a quiche. Very good quiche. Okay. An amazing quiche. Well, I don't have a crust. I can only do so many things, okay? It's an omelet. It can be an omelet and a bread bowl. It's like a quiche. And bread. Peach made an omelet, not a quiche. I'm sorry. I can't make quiche on the road. I don't have an oven. Not how baking works. Beth would have built you an oven. Oh, thank you. I don't think we have, like, you know, the, there's a long rest and then there's oven making time. The oven is slightly cursed. <laughs> built up the skulls of the dead Smearwood villagers. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, but um. The quiche. Souls of the Dam. A, a very fluffy omelet, not a quiche. It doesn't flower. No. Uh, but as Salinger wakes up, if he, you know, happens to, Peach's making omelet for breakfast. Uh, she also uh, has a pot of hot water that is uh, kind of in the coals. Uh, but she's not doing anything with that yet. Uh, she's kind of fussing around making the, uh, getting the eggs moving properly. Uh, she intends to use the hot water to make uh Hakeem, but that's secondary to making sure that these eggs, precious as they are, do not burn. Please make a performance roll for how good, or or cooking supplies for how good this omelet is. Pretty good. Pretty good omelet. Is that 19 plus 1 for a total of a 20? Yeah. In fact, Salinger, this omelet is so delicious. You gain 10 temporary hit points. Whoa. Take so that. You still that, get help. Would you say there? If, is Salinger awake even right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Salinger woke up to the smell of sauteing garlic and chives and mushrooms probably walked over while you were very focused on the eggs and helped get the pot of Hakeem ready before you even realized he was sitting there. It says Peach turns around with a kind of fry pan in front. She'll go, oh, Salinger, hey, uh, uh, made something that's close to what, what you're looking for. I didn't have any flour or nothing, so I couldn't do a proper quiche, but I think I got some good fluff with the, uh, with the omelet. I, I whisked it really fast with a just figured you could use some protein. A good meal in your stomach for today, you know. I thought it might remind you of home. You didn't have to make my favorite. It ain't my last meal. He says as he takes a bite. But damn, you outdid yourself with this one. You flatter me, Sal. Best I could do on the road. But thank you. You don't actually get hurt, okay? I'm gonna get hurt a little. I'm gonna win. Too. You know, it's not that I don't have faith in you or anything. I, you're the strongest person I know in, in every sense of the word. I just... It's awful seeing you get hurt. Even if it's... That arrow going into your shoulder yesterday just... Mm. Felt like it might as well have hit me. Just, it's hard to stand by and watch that happen to somebody that you care about. And I just, 
I know that you have to do it. I just, I want you to be as prepared as you can. I got a good meal, a vote of confidence, surrounded by people that clearly care about me far more than is necessary in a moment. It's just another scrap. And I had immediate combat training by being pelted with snow from Casey just to keep my reflexes sharp. So I think we're going to be fine. So your concern is noted. Your kindness is doubly noted. And tomorrow is just going to be another day after this is over. It was later today. Yeah, but tomorrow after this is over is okay. another. Because I'm not going to be dead. My heart's not going to be eaten out of character. I, I know, I just... We've lost a lot of folks, okay? And, you know, Shaladi and Kibeth and Safran and them, they got these real big families, right? You know, growing up, it was just me and my mom. And, like, you were there so much, too. You know, but even then, you you had your folks, right? But I was kind of... With my mom gone now, I don't have anybody else, anybody left, really, properly. You know, everybody else is somebody else waiting for them home at Ship's End except for you and me. So just want you to know that if you if something does happen to you, you'll be really badly missed. And so you are not allowed to get yourself hurt. So. Well, that seals it then, doesn't it? Yeah, I can't just... lose. It's impossible. Um, in that moment, Poppy is going to hop over, give Peach a nuzzle, and actually shift colors once. Towards her weird, roughly bohemian color, just for a flash, and then back to Salinger's shades. Aw, oh, cute. I know I keep having these moments of great confession, I just... I deeply regret missing that chance to talk to my mom. I want to make sure I don't ever have those regrets with you. I want you, I don't ever want anything left unsaid. So my apologies if I'm getting dramatic. I know you'll be just fine. Uh, Sal puts a hand on hers and says, if you weren't being dramatic, it would not be you, Peach Pie, and you keep on being you. Thank you for the breakfast. Question, out of character, just because I can't remember. We had talked about it, but I don't remember if it ever happened in character. If Salinger showed Peach what he has in his pack, what he found in the... No, no we've been good for that, was that the next. That's the next thing. Okay, good, good. I had to, oh, okay, good, good, had to good. build just enough suspense before throwing it into the fire. Um, not really. Um, so, um, During that moment, Sal reaches into his bag and says, um, I'll wrap this up for you first. Um, Timing-wise, I figure you ought to have it, but hold on to it before it's a gift after this fight's over. And he hands her a package. It's rectangular, wrapped in simple brown paper with gold ribbon. We'll open it together after you win the fight. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Al. Sunrise is just a sliver higher. It's still almost the deep shadows of a sunset that'll last all day. It's, uh, after breakfast is finished and some of you are having Hakeem, um, let me have a good roll perception check. I'm so consistently oblivious that it's going to have to be a joke from now on. 
I mean, that's just your character relation. Ishlan's got like extra eyes somewhere. Those rolls. <laughs> it's definitely Ishlan, and this is first. Catch a bit of movement from the east in the direction of an anomaly that you and I had found right before. She glances over that way and then snaps to attention and uh, rises to her feet. Does a little bit of a meerkat look as she pulls the book that she had gotten. Um, just into one hand, she doesn't actually knock an arrow, but she'll jerk her chin toward the... Uh, an emotion that's actually fairly reminiscent of Shilati. Just sort of motions for the chin toward the motion that she saw. Nose in a book doesn't even notice you doing that. Is that, is that them? I cannot see it, but something's coming. You just caught a glimpse of movement, flash of something white between the trees, different from the snow. It was over in the east. Oh, so not the same thing as the thing from the north. Um, well, that was a, well, that was a place. This is a, a thing, a movement. She, at this point, starts to swivel a little bit to keep track of that motion, um, and does put an arrow uh, to the bow. She starts to step away a little bit toward the edge of the camp. You guys see Echelon moving off towards the eastern edge of camp? Yeah, Casey would fall though relatively close behind. Yeah, as two of you move past a copse of trees. Oh, what were we going to say? She's not actually leaving the edge of the camp yet. Um, she calls out to other people. Keep an eye out the last time you have to investigate something, the rest of you uh, ended up getting jumped. So, we let's not repeat that. that. We handled that situation fine. Let's just not be surprised again. Wasn't surprised. She just gives him a long look. Yeah, and then, <laughs> as she was not there and did not realize that they actually weren't surprised. Yeah, so you move past the small cups of trees to sort of get enough vantage point to look over a hilltop. Um, you can see that there's a river winding through green forest tinged with bits of purple. Somehow it's, it's not winter there at all. There's something slightly fuzzy to the edges of it, like it's not real at all. And slightly translucent. There's a splash of water. You see a large white wolf with two tails emerge from the water, come up onto the shore, and then kind of shake water off, and then two more join it, climbing up out of the river. And they're slightly trim, they're slightly, slightly translucent. I can't see through the rest of it. Did we see that river before? Is this a new river that has appeared out of nowhere? Mm, and that wasn't there last night. Hey, see, I'll kind of crouch, moving up behind Ishlan, crouch next to her. And I mean, it is the person on watch's job to warn people in camp so they don't get surprised, you know? Uh, sorry. Not that we're I just surprised. Want to I just want to clarify the um, point where these wolves are coming from. This new landscape is in the same direction as the Feywild thinness that we area uh, discovered and I've discovered before. Yes. Or is it coming from like okay? Yeah, yeah same thing. And 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 I don't think Nishlan would be confused about this. This is yeah, sort of at the what's the word? Um, this is the sort of the gradient between where you are and whatever that. Place, whatever's happening there. Um, 
<laughs> she just rolls her eyes at uh, Casey's jab and says, All right, fine, but we're here and there's something coming and it's not what we expected. So uh, she takes a few steps back and over her shoulder the others and says, Looks like that thinness I was talking about. Seems like it's uh, considerably thinner and now there's these wolf things coming toward us that are see-through. Whoops. Is this, I mean, this isn't what you saw last night. No. Also, this is Ripper now. I want to see. It's, it's uh, River, but it's different than the, than the portal. So can we actually go through this? Can, can they come through it? Well, they got out of it and they're coming toward us. So I would say, yes, it definitely looks, it looks similar to how the, the steady link and to the fear of in the place between looked, right? In terms of how, like, it's... Things are appearing and things can come out of it. Um, yeah, kind of. But there is, like I said, there is that translucence to it as though it's not quite tangible. Mm. Mm. Not totally sure whatever it is. If they're actually here, here though, because we can see through them. You can watch. We, can we hear the river? Um. Roll, roll perception check. Okay. Oh, Rhea, you can roll one too. You did come back to camp. I wasn't just jumping the gun just then, was I? You guys came back to camp and were like, "Oh my god, there's a river." Never really yeah, fully yeah, yeah. It, was, it was muffled, but you could hear it. You got at least a 10. I had an average awareness when you got my attention to specifically try to pay attention. Ugh. I, I don't know. I think it's... I don't know. I mean... Easy. Stands there looking through the... the they all, yeah, they might be able to come through. Wait, sorry, are you? Did you guys go back to camp, or have you guys moved to where you can all see? Because you can't see uh, from we camp. Went back to camp. Okay. Oh, okay. Or at least I went back to camp. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think Ishlan is, however, going to go retreat and find some place to hide uh, if there is in fact such a place behind a tree up a tree behind oh, a bush yeah, I think there's plenty of opportunities um yeah you don't see anything coming so far as to approach your camp no? yeah so with everyone else in case I'll say yeah, different kind of portal. There was a three wolf. I guess you just had an idea. Three wolf-looking characters in the river, which they didn't really catch sight of us. But even if they did, I don't know if they would be able to make it make it to us. Well, this just strengthens our idea of this being a another potential home for the egg folk. They could hunt wolves. Or the wolves could hunt them, and then it's nature. Are we supposed to go to the egg folk or are they supposed to come to us? Where is this challenge being held? Did we determine that? Hmm? I don't know. I don't think that was explicitly discussed. She told us the time, right? 
Has that time passed? Has not passed. You have like six hours. I mean, we could travel north towards towards them, and then I could fire off a noise that would draw their attention. The wolves? No, the egg people. Well, no, I mean, it's noon. It's the great o'clock time. It'll be fine. I wanna... Okay, show me the wolves, because I can't hear the river, but maybe if I, like, am looking, I'll be able to see the wolves. Oh, yeah, it's straight up here. No. Because when, when we, when uh, Ishalan and I saw it, it was just nature and trees and nothing I could touch. Like, the more, the closer I got to something, the, the further away it seemed. Like, anywhere where I was, it wasn't. As you guys move east of camp, past some trees and up a little rise, and you can peek over the hill. Down the slope of the hill, you can see a winding river and forest. It looks like it's in autumn, like in early autumn. You see these three large wolves, you know, probably from all the shoulders, a bit large as horses. Two tails. Two, oh, fuck. Two of them seem to be... Uh, they're, they're like playing, wrestling. They're just lounging around. Um, let me have you troll stealth, please. AC leans down next to Araya and says, If they could get to us, the situation would be dire. What do you think that they're even aware of us? Um, if the stealth involves like creeping softly, my boots give me that advantage. So I'm okay, roll advantage. Super snailthy. Yeah, I got 27. I was, I was going to probably don't need it at this point necessarily, but I think. Oh, yeah, um, she's like she... hiding in a tree, being like, mm. try me, mother friend. And just the people uh, who went over that way. Yeah, um, she would have gone too. I don't know if it's necessarily like, useful at this point, but I think she would have uh, put a hand on Maria's shoulder and been like pointed out some, you know, twigs not to step on or whatever. Uh, what if cast guidance on her? Ooh! I've never had it cast on me. What? You can add a plus a 1d4, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're all moving very quietly. There's a moment where Casey's knee barely brushes a rock. You see one of the, you see one of the, the big wolves that was lounging. Its ear flicks and it turns its head in your direction, looks straight at you. You can see these white wolves have um, brilliantly blue eyes. Yeah. I keep one. Yeah, Casey. Sorry, I just. Oh, I was just gonna say, I I just realized I don't actually have advantage on this, so it would have been a fifteen. Just put it. Hmm. Although that is a one, so I am actually. Uh, I haven't done that. I w would reroll anyway, so. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. So then the reroll is the advantage roll. The twenty. Okay, thank. Goodness. Yeah. Do you want to just do that? Do you want me to reroll? Um. No, yeah, I think, yeah, we can do that. If you have auto roll advantage turned on and you have to reroll for some reason, well, no, it's because you would know the result ahead of time. Yeah, so reroll. It would, wasn't auto turned on. It was just, I, I did that mistakenly because I thought the uh, ranger thing covered that. But it oh, yeah, no, no, you're fine. Um, reroll, though, because otherwise you know the result before you make the decision. Even better. Even better! You see Locke's eyes with this wolf and like a translucent image of the wolf appears over his face and howls into the air. He raises an eyebrow. 
nod slowly. Interesting. What are you doing to do that? I'm just having a moment. No. <laughs> Unlocking my inner wolf. Okay. I'm gonna start wearing t-shirts. Nothing but wolves howling at the moon. Yeah. You see that the wolf, this wolf watches you for a while. It doesn't actually seem to care too much. Casey's a little heartbroken. <laughs> and then after another moment, um. So they're all reacting to something, all three of them kind of perk up and then dash and splash back into the river. You see streaks of white moving through the water and they're gone. Yeah. Well, it's it's good to know that absolutely massive horse-sized wolves roam the Feywild and do not fear bipedal creatures one lick. Maybe Muna doesn't go to the Feywild with her friends if that's where the the anything we we have to Okay. Forewarned is forearmed. seen one of those before no two tails do you think it's luckier that way yeah as casey yeah as casey turns back towards the camp with the others why do they swim what can't because they're not scared of water unlike some friends of ours oh well you've seen wolves here like they don't they don't go in the water they don't right. not go in the water. Love, love, love. Like, remember that one dog that played at the docks and it was in the water all the time? Aren't wolves like just like one step removed from that? No, I mean dogs and wolves are different. Cats and cats and wolves are different. You're a cat. They're they're metaphorically. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not a cat. Like No. No, we had, a, you know, a tabaxi priestess and more cat than you, but but you, but you in water. Don't call her a cat. That's... No, not to her face. No, she will scratch you. Yikes. But... No, it's... Is it time yet? Casey looks up at the sun. I was kind of hoping we would magically have some wolf friends helping us out. Salinger doesn't need help. No, he no, I know. He's gonna he's got this easily. Yeah. About There's... how far away is the river does the river look like it is from here? Hmm. So like two hundred feet. So it's is enough for her to sort of walk over into that area. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think she's going to set off in that direction, keeping an eye out uh, just to see if hopefully nothing jumps her. But she sort of, when she gets there, she wants to lean down and brush her hand in the water. Yeah, you move closer before too long. You can both hear the sound of your feet crunching in snow and brushing through grass. You hear the muffled sound of the river. It's almost like when you have water in your ears and then start to hear and you splash the water. Right? You feel yourself brushing snow. But you also feel yourself splash the water. It's chill compared to the air. Ends up again, fries her 
snowy, icy, watery hand off. Uh, shudders a little bit. My brain feels like it's fighting itself. Ooh, I want to try. As you, um, and standing there closer to the river, you can see that the sky's changed color. It's almost a, a lavender hue. Um, you can hear insects. It's a flutter of uh, fireflies. It seems more real the closer we get to the water. There's a slight fuzziness to things, as though what you're seeing is overlaid on top of what's real. It's different from looking through the portal like the one that led to the Ornacus's land. That was like a tear in the world, and this is like two places existing at once. From a distance away, because Casey did not go up to the river. Are you two coming? Right, we have to cheer for Sal. And she hurries, hurries away, but casting looks back, kind of like searching the forest for those wolves. Yeah, you guys head back. Yeah, you don't see the the wolves. They seem to have gone. As you make your way back towards camp, uh, who's the who's the person lingering most in the pack as you return? Ashlyn. We've got a long time to oh. heal away. Give it with the person with good perception. Uh, Michelin, as you're heading back, roll a perception check. Does it still count as wilderness here? Yes. Not that it mattered as we have a thing. Double 21s. Nice. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't mention. Yeah. You sense a presence for just a moment. And the wherewithal to look back. And the path beyond the river, through some trees, catch a glimpse of a figure. Broad shouldered, green, dark green skin. Half orc. Broad. Blaring antlers, enormous, ornamented with silver and bits of twin feathers hanging. You see, whatever this thing is, sees you from a distance. It's covered in animal furs and reaches up, thick fingers broad nails and seems almost to grab the air itself and twists and then as though the as though wind blows through the echo of the Feywild is blown away like fog watching this with puzzlement at first and then as it twists and starts to fade, she goes, no, 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 fuck. And then she spins and starts to bolt back toward it. You run back down the hill. The river's gone, but the whatever is there has not completely vanished. It's just receded significantly, much smaller. You know, it's 
400 feet away now from your camp. There's, and it's almost thinner, like you can just barely make it out. It's still there, but much smaller than it was. Without thinking about it, I think she's going to dash after it. Um, the part of it that blew away encompassed the figure as well, so whatever portion of it it was in was eroded away. Essentially, she's just following this patch and comes to a halt once she reaches that, I suppose. Um, her intent, without thinking twice about it, was to try and dive in, but since the river is gone, it's probably just grass. At this point, if there is any bit left of it. Yeah, no, the river. The river was swept away. Here she hits that vaguely purpley, only slightly warmer spot now. And comes to a halt. Just, like stands there for a minute. Jumps up and down. Takes the turf. Walks through it a few times. And then Turns around and walk back to the camp. A few moments later, you see Ishtalan coming back to camp. Thank you so long. She just wrote the question off. Sal, are you ready? It's almost time, yeah? Yeah. Pats his shoulder, not magically. You'll have to respect at least my restraint. It's vaguely threatening. What? Casey, though, I think that you like to make me out to be a lot scarier than I actually am, but that makes you like me more. So what's wrong with you? <laughs> As they uh, return to camp, what's Salinger doing? Salinger is carefully packing up his things. So he's got his bag set, he's got everything folded and neat, and he's got a handful of weapons set in front of him, looking at them, debating which ones he's going to wrap and which one he's going to take with him. There's a spear in the snow, leaned up against a log. There's a big, gnarly, hideous greatsword that he dismisses pretty quickly and wraps it in a sheet and ties it. There's the untested hammer that clearly serendipitously found his way into his hands. And then there's the gauntlet that he's had since the beginning. Part of something greater, some story he's never got another piece of. And that's when people will come back. I'm looking at those three objects. Speech up to. Uh, Peach is just kind of quietly sitting uh, in the area around the camp. Uh, she's watching Salinger like get ready, but she's not bothering him per se. But she's also not letting him leave her sight. But just quietly sitting. And what about, uh, what's Kabeth doing? Mm -hmm. Kabeth looks very disgruntled. Um, she's repacked her stuff and is 
kind of watching everyone else move around her while she sits and uh, chews thoughtfully on probably what's like a hard biscuit from her pack. Still a few hours left before the time would come. still low, but it's moved across the horizon. Any preparations you'd like to make? Would you like to pass some time? Sal's fully prepared. It's a little farther across the uneven edge between the trees. There's always just a hint now of that strange color. And then when the sun starts to reach it's the enough that is still low on the horizon. And noon has come. You hear the first boom, the drums coming from the north. And you start to see catches of movement through the trees. And you see a few of those Ornacus figures appear, and then the largest of them emerges the hilltop. It seems to have curved blades made of bone in each of his hands. As you'd seen before, as large as Salinger, muscle and scale and ridges of uh, uh, ridges of bone, sharp teeth, dressed in the furs and bones of things he's hunted begins to come down the hill as the others blank out on another side of them. They don't have their weapons raised, but they are in hand. Bows with thick arrows and colorful feathers and blades on their belts and sharp claws, long tails. They spread out to the edge of uh, the circle that you've made. The largest of them steps forward, looks across eyes, Fix on the Salinger. A sneer that moves across his face. Teotihuacan. <laughs> Sal doesn't respond immediately as he's currently folding his jacket and setting it neatly beside the weapons that he chose to leave behind. Rests the 50 pound warhammer on his shoulders and then turns around and finishes strapping on that gauntlet on the offhand and gives him a polite bow as he straightens his collar. to step forward. Snow twigs crunch beneath his feet. He said the others have arrows knocked in their bows, but they're keeping their distance, honoring the circle that you've made in the snow. You see the large one spins each of the swords in his hand. Each of his hands 
circles you at an evaluative distance, blooded eyes moving up and down, measuring you. Sal rolls his shoulders, following him, slow steps, holding up his position, making sure to keep eye contact, but not at his eyes, at his shoulders and his waist, and the way his body moves, keeping the hammer at center mass, and just waiting. Little shuffles in the snow, very little movement at all. Creature circles Salinger. What is Peach doing? Peach is uh, at the edge of the circle, um, standing next to, I feel like, Ixalan, unless she is elsewhere. Uh, she has the uh, pistol at her hip, uh, the rifle held loosely in her hand at her side. They're both loaded, uh, but she isn't taking aim, despite the... Uh, the other Aranaka aiming their arrows around. Uh, but she's standing there firmly. Uh, but she does uh, call out to Sal and say, Good luck, Sal. And you do get a bargaining inspiration. Peach, please roll disadvantage sleight of hand. understood what happened. Uh, pretty a girl steps forward at the edge of the circle. She says something in her strange language and maybe repeats it for each of you. One bites one. No revenge. As the creature continues to circle Salinger in another quarter, Still on. What are you doing? Uh, she has taken up a station next to the place she had picked out, which is within sight of the others, but uh, is next to a tree that's wide enough that she can, and still has enough undergrowth around it that she can step, she can pull a Homer Simpson and fade back into it uh, when if nobody's looking at her. Beth doing. Mm. Hey Beth is standing on the edge of the group and brooding. Uh, she is, uh, I'm trying to think of what weapon she currently has. Uh, she has both her warhammer and the great sword strapped to her back and she's, the javelin is in her hands. Actually, no. Her warhammer is in her hands, and javelin, and the greatsword on her back. Yeah, need I? She's taken up a position just behind Sal, kneeling on the ground, and her hands in a prayer, clasped in prayer, but casting no spells. But her eyes are trained on Sal and not on the everything else. It is a little scarier than she thought it was going to be. Casey is leaned back against a tree uh, near the circle and he kind of tugs a little uncomfortably at the studded leather that he's wearing. He never seems comfortable in it, so he adjusts a little bit, but he leans back into position seemingly calm and no weapons visible on him at all. He's just watching what's going on. This leader has finished a full circle around Salinger. He suddenly turns and widens his, widens his stance and holds his swords out to the side. You see his slitted eyes dilate and almost a grin moves across his mouth to show all of his teeth and a long tongue licks across his teeth. He barks out at you with that language and then pretty a girl almost seems to echo. 
He says, he will honor you by wearing your bones. And then, do you act first, Salinger, or do you let him act first? Depends. Do I have a chance to say something real quick? Mm Mm-hmm. It was a story I used to love as a boy about Balfus and the Aranakis. And I used to think it was about understanding something foreign, something other, something completely different. I think maybe I was wrong, and he vanishes. You see the creature, eyes grow wide. Does anything immediately happen after you vanish? I would give him two to three seconds to just ponder what occurred, and then from the ground up, uh, swing that hammer as hard as I can. Are you moving after you vanish? Nope. Okay. Oh, wait, I can't hear you. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, we're in the snow, so no, I'm not moving because I would give away my position. Okay, you're the two of you aren't close enough to attack each other yet. Oh, then I would ready an action for him to get in range to make that swing. Okay, gotcha. If it happens within six seconds, otherwise I'm going to look very silly. Oh, that's perfect. You vanish. You're ready. You see the creature's eyes go wide, and then all the colors on his feathers begin to shift, and he <laughs> vanishes. And then you see footsteps <laughs> in the snow rushing towards you. As he comes into your range, triggering your held action, make your attack. You cannot see him unless you can see invisibility, but you know where he is because of the snow. So regular disadvantage? Yes. Okay, then I'll attack recklessly with the held action. To make it a regular attack. Okay, sounds good. He's well, interesting. Too, right? You're also invisible, so neither of you can see each other, so those actually cancel each other out. So Reckless oh, do they? would give you advantage, yeah? Man, I really want to do 3d6 radiant damage on a crit, and I want to try for it, so yeah, I'm still going to go Reckless. Okay. Because if he just goes up like a firework on the first hit, boy, would that be a good story. Dirty 20. And the dirty 20 hits. All right, so Sal reappears just as those footsteps get within five feet. Um, Snow making a little trench like a canyon kicking up from the side as the Warhammer goes up and hits him right in the center mass, lifting him just a foot off the ground with impact. Hitting him for 2d6 plus 3 plus strength, which I think is just that 12. Yeah. Does the radiant happen too? Only if he's a construct or undead. Oh! Uh, what is your. Because they're robots all along. That's right. Uh, what, is your, Do it. what is your total damage? Or that one just 12. 12, okay. Yeah, there's the, the satisfying boom impact. This the the hammer, the might of Brunhilda makes solid contact with the hunter, the Aranakis hunter. Um, just for flavor, nearby there's a boom impact against a tree and bits of snow and twig fall down. You see some snow settle on top of this invisible creature's shoulders for a moment before it rushes at you. You see boom, 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 boom. Footsteps appearing in the snow, you hear the hiss of blades through the air. You can't see it, but you hear cutting the wind as they move toward you. And there's a moment for each of you where you know the, this attack you cannot see is coming, and Salinger has begun the fight. And that's where we'll end for tonight. I know, I was in full watch it, watch it. Fully ready to. 
fully ready to stay up for an additional hour to watch this fight. Ditto. Get him south. The rounds won't go much faster if it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. They will be quick. I'm certain of that. Man. So, like, me getting to duel a baby dinosaur and now a grown-ass hunter dinosaur is pretty fucking rad. Just throw this it is, there. It's a theme. No, we're we're no one else could do it. We gotta complete your companion quest. Then we can romance you. <laughs> All of us. Yeah. Well, after this, who could resist? Oh, man, it's so good. Just looked at my character sheet fully for the first time this session and realized that for some reason all of my hit points have just vanished from my sheet. Like I don't have a hit point maximum or any current hit points. And I'm like, where did my HP oh, no. go? No, you're invincible. It's like Infinity Mr. Burn. cannot be bounded. Yeah. So like many Mr. germs all trying to get in at once. We yeah, it's, it. like, it's better. It's the three stooges disease. They can try out, try to get through the door. The, uh, the ominous, just like fog of the Feywild around us and predators circling was pretty cool as well. Oh, and the music, Chris, excellent choice. I know, it sounded very like, the sacrifice is going to... Yeah, it is felt like classic Star Trek in the, in the absolute best way. I'm like, oh God, we're gonna watch Kirk fight a monster.